Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audiences, my dear brothers, sisters, especially in California. We say our dear Californians,、uh, welcome to the East West Show, that is exclusively sponsored by Wolfers, the Belgian royal family designated the brand of jewelry that has 400 years of glorious history.、Uh, the ring itself, hand forged by ten generations of the greatest of craftsmen. That stands for the、uh, testimony for the spectacular and the share of the royal glory.、Uh, with me today is my dear friend, and I believe the dear friend to the whole community. I would even say, dear friend of the whole California, former assemblyman of California Assembly House, 49th District, now currently the board member of the California Board. Of unemployment insurance appeal,、uh, Honorable Mike Yin. Mr. Jack Zhao, it's my pleasure to be、uh, with one of the most influential and informative、uh, journalist hosts that I have encountered. Thank you very much. And、Thank、I consider、much. it an honor to be here again. Thank you very much.、Uh, many many years ago, back in the early days, when he was a board member of.、Uh, Uh, Garfield School District. We, as a media, have been following with this great man of California, all the way to、uh, city of Monterey Park, all right, and then to uh, uh, assembly of、uh, assembly house of California, and all the way to even Los Angeles、uh, College, City College School Board. And now, even to the all the way to the appeal house of California for uninsur unemployment insurance. All the way by looking at the trail, though, you find a foot footsteps of a man who works for the grassroots people for their benefit, for their rights. All right. So for that, I would seriously express. Our welcome on behalf of EDI, on behalf of this television station, and I believe I have lots of fans on behalf of my fans to give you the warmest welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you.、Uh, I said this much because I have a big thing to ask you. <laughs> I I have a big favor to ask you. I have been doing、uh, the East West show for so many years, and during this many years, though. And it was must be no less than one hundred times that I talk about immigration subject. It looks at a subject that I've been talking about so many times, though people seems to be undesensitized because nothing has happened, nothing has、yes. been done. You keep on talking, 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 talking until people get numb. Well, they are anticipating so much the change. Nothing had happened so far. So, what is the status quo of、uh, United States immigration so far, versus the immigration laws? Please. Thank you very much. I、um, know you are a, a lawyer yourself. Yes, as an immigration lawyer. Yes, for from over, that perspective,、uh, though, I'm talking about the right man as a politician, as a immigration lawyer yourself, though. So. Crying baby to the mother. Well, I think、um, first of all,、um, it's important to know what the immigration laws are, and I spent most of my career trying to advocate for anyone who qualifies for those laws to become legal.、Mm -hmm. um, so I think for many years, you had a Congress that, for the most part, was trying to clarify the immigration law. Based on what they saw, the will of the people was. Right now, I believe you have an administration and the president who wants to eliminate the immigration laws. It's、mm -hmm. a very different output. The effect up until、uh, President Trump has been to look at immigrants as benefiting our society, 
and allowing them to come as students, uh, business people, uh, investors, and family members because they've seen how they have enriched our community. Um, the current administration's role is to virtually eliminate family immigration as we know it and to allow people to come in under very narrow range, mm. basically to cut immigration more than half. In other words, ideologically, we are dealing with a different philosophy. You're absolutely correct. One is to look at America under the Statute of Liberty uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, to welcome all who flee oppression yeah, yeah, yeah. and as well as to contribute to a it's society like of immigrants. Give to me, give all to me, right? Yes, exactly. And I raise my light but beside the golden door. That yes. kind of a call. And now, from to, to now, philosophically, we change the whole thing. Yes, from immigrants are good to immigrants are mainly bad uh -huh, unless uh -huh. they fit a very narrow rule. Speak of that devil, though, uh, we might want to take a look into history, right? We used to be, we are called still, the land of the free and the home of the brave, for which we have convinced lots of people so that we earn the international reputation, right? As immigration, land of Im immigration. So are we still land of the free, home of the brave? If not, why? Fundamentally, why? You mentioned about the ideology change, right? Why would the ideology change from the rudimentic? Yes, it's very um, a mystery to me because mm -hmm. the current president says, look at the great economy we have, low unemployment, mm -hmm. we have rising wages, and we have economic opportunity. He says that on the one hand, but on the other hand, he said, let's get rid of the immigrants. What he doesn't say, though, is that this country was founded on immigrants, that immigrants pay more into the system than they take out, mm -hmm. and his very own family got a green card through family immigration. His wife got a green card through him. His wife's parents just became permanent residents uh, just a few months ago. So what I believe has happened is to deny the truth and to submit, if you will, fake news. Take myself. Fake history. Yeah, yeah, take myself for, 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 for an example. I myself am an immigrant. I came as an immigrant, right? My son, who is the production of me myself in life though, has made three inventions that are patented with the United States, the Bureau of a Patent of the, of, the, of the IT industry, right? For which he gets recognition from the United States of Congress, from the state of California, and my other son is doing the same thing. Are we that bad or are we that good? You yourself, for example, you're the son of immigrant and your lovely wife, right? Uh, Congresswoman Judy Chu, her parents, grandparents, were immigrants too. My cameraman, my editor, half of them, they're immigrants. So we're based on immigrants, are we or aren't we? Jack, you bring up a very good point. Mm -hmm. If anyone has studied the history of America, mm -hmm. they know that the great railroads came from east to west, yes. who built the railroads. Yes. And so that one thing captures our immigration policy, which is when it's convenient, we allow the Chinese to come in, and many of them died right here in California, carrying dynamite up to the mountains to yeah. level. The Sierra Madre Mountain, exactly. which is the hardest exactly. part. Exactly. And yet, those very same ch Chinese immigrants their families were excluded under the Chinese Exclusion Act. Yes. Welcome when it's convenient and get out when it's not. Mm. I really think that we have to look at our roots, as you said, your family. We have a proverb in Chinese. I wonder if you are aware of that. To kill the monkey after milling. You know, in the old time, they used yes. the monkey 
to, I mean, not the donkey, I'm sorry, yes, the use the donkey to, 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 to do the to meal. To do the heavy, really, right? heavy work, yes. So one million is done, kill mm -hmm. the donkey. Yes. Right, that kind of thing. Yes. I would hate to live under a country that discovered too late that mm. it was immigrants mm. that created uh, much of our ec economic wealth uh. after we kick out the immigrants and then the economy, of course, spoils. I don't want to learn that. I want to learn history, which is that immigrants have created wealth. And so therefore, um, you look at every field, uh, research, immigrant help to find the cure for HIV for AIDS. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look at uh, the research of people working on cancer, the cure. Mm -hmm. There are mainly a lot of immigrants that are doing that. Yes. We are, uh, who's taking care of our elderly and the sick? Mm -hmm. Immigrants, the nurses in the hospitals, immigrants. Many of them came over uh, 40 years ago as Filipino nurses because they had a four-year degree from the Philippines. So if you look in solely in the area of health care, you find immigrants. Investors in it our is great so projects. It's so obvious. It is so obvious that we immigra immigrants have done this much, including you, your wife, me, myself, EDI, and my crew, my whole crew, including my two lovely sons. So, I mean, obvious. So apparent. Why are we still feeling the pressure? Why is the ideology still changing? That, of course, the purpose of you and I sitting here, I have done this kind of talk for no less than 100 times. With you, we have to do it in a different way. We have to find why it happens, right? Shall we? Yes. Okay, my dear lovely audiences, today I'm, uh, bring the crying baby to the mother. The mother being an immigration lawyer as a profession and the politica, politician uh, in, uh, in whole California, and I believe next step is the Congress. And it, he, he is now just uh, taking a little respite. And we are sharing point of views over this immigration issue. And I'm not satisfied with say yes or no of this level and will go more profound to the deeper layer of the onion to find out why would this whole thing happen or not happen. Stay with us, please. Hello, dear friends, lovely audiences, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to the great discussion. I would say great discussion, the greatest of the year, talking about the big subject, the old subject. So many times in talk that people are becoming desensitized. However, the importance remains even more seriously. Okay, now, uh, with my good friend, a good friend to the entire community, entire California, Honorable Mike Yin, we are seeming to have touch base or are touching base of the issue. On one hand, we find there is a philosophy change, philosophy, ideology change going against the concept or the, the, the conceptual belief that we are an immigration country. And on the other, we have in history, all the way to till present, we have so many evidences to indicate that we are, the immigrants are so important to the country. Why would such a thing happen or not happen? Right, back to you, sir. You just mentioned, I'm very grateful for that, for your memory, that during the great Pan-American Railroad, though, right, in the production, the contribution made by the Chinese immigrants they called coolies, coolies, right? That's back right. then, back then. Okay, now, uh, currently, at the present time, you mentioned also there are greatest contributions made by um, immigrants. I give you an example. If Chinese, Amer uh, Chinese Americans, Chinese immigrants 
made great, great contributions to the railroad, though. Now in NASA, one of my friends, same age of mine, he is the one that designs the one arm of the land cruiser, land cruiser on Mars, wow. which is still working. Yes. Every time I'm talking to him, he says he he will quote unquote my arm. That's my arm, my arm, because he designed it. If we did one time, accidentally by contributing to the United States of America by building a railway, we are still doing it with our Martian, with, with our Mars, Martian project. That's a very good analogy. Yeah. So okay, now that is so great, so obvious. My question is, why would the ideology still change? in front of such a good evidences? Well, the answer is very simple. We have a president that is ba basically looking at one part of America, small part of America, but a very loud part of America, and those are people that don't want immigrants. Many of them may have prejudice. I don't want to presume that, but they have made it loud and clear that they feel threatened. They feel threatened because if they have lost their job, they're blaming the immigrants. If they have uh, uh, too many problems for their kids in school, they're going to blame the immigrants. If they have a um, problem getting into college, they're going to blame the immigrants. If they have a problem with their environment, either it's too loud or too polluted, they're blaming the immigrants. We have a president who is taking that group of people, and they have every right to protest, but he's basing his immigration policy on one small group of people, and that's exactly the reason. Our job is to look at the other people who have benefited from immigration mm -hmm. to say that we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. In right. other words, we want to look and whatever problems that people have with immigrants, and let's just say we're going to deal with it, but don't eliminate the immigration. Don't, I think the saying is, don't cut off your nose because you don't like your face. Don't get rid of your car just because you don't like a hole in the seat. We can fix it. We can fix it. Don't get rid of the uh -huh, car. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Again, the car analogy. The car may have some dirt on the seat, but don't get rid of the car Not because word, it's taking you to work. In other words, you don't refuse to eat because of, of choking. Y yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's, well that's, that's one layer of the question. More profoundly behind it, there is uh, something hidden. There is something hidden. All right. Now, uh, once when the railway was built, it has a, there is a calculation about 98% of the hard job were done by Chinese immigrants. That means the Chinese immigrants back then, Chinese coolies back then, played a absolute majority job in the building, in the building of the railroad. However, looking at the picture of the completion, there is the picture. You recall seeing yeah, that picture? There's no Chinese in there. Right. No, there's no Chinese. Yes. Not even the Chinese. There's one article talking about that picture. Originally, there was one Chinese face there. It was omitted. Eliminated. Yes. It was erased. It's an insult. That face. Right. Shame. Shame. All right. Now, we're, we're not denying the whole thing, throwing the baby out with the water. But we're still doing the same thing. Once we did the Exclusion Act, right? And today we're doing the same thing. Now, putting all these together, you mentioned the number of people, though. I would do my try, all right? There's one thing of immigration, anti-immigration. There's the other thing of discrimination, anti-discrimination. Do they go hand in hand? I think the answer to your question is they do go hand in hand in this sense. The people that hate immigrants are not educated as to the contributions. And those that favor immigration 
are educated about that. So what is our role here? Our role is to educate. Let me give you an example. When I chaired the Assembly Committee on Transportation, a great honor, mm -hmm. we passed legislation affecting roads, bridges, highways, airports in California. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you the one thing that I remember many years ago. A gentleman that was the head of a railroad called me in his office one day and he said, I'd like you to visit our office north of here. And mm -hmm. he showed me a book that had thousands of Chinese names. He said, these were the names of the coolies that were brought from China to work on the railroad all over the world, actually, to, uh, mm. but mainly Chinese. He said that their names were never registered in the local cities. They were not considered human beings. They were like animals. Uh -huh. And he said many of them died. And he told me a shocking story. He said that these Chinese, quote unquote, coolies were given the most dangerous job. They were carrying dynamite on their back. They would go up heights as high as five to six to 10 stories on a ladder. Mm. And every night, at least 10 to 25% of them never came back. They died, they were blown up. And he said the only record that they ever lived was in the railroad register. And many of the widows and, and the crying families would write to the railroad to ask them, do you have any record that my, my family member is still alive? Mm, they have no record. And there was only that record that they had been registered, but no record that they had died. And so this is a double insult. So I think that there is a move now to recognize the horrors of slavery that is very, very positive. Mm. Recognizing what the Japanese Americans did, went through in the, in the camps after World War II, during World mm. War II. Mm. We need to make sure that we educate people about the contributions of Chinese Americans. And I think when they do that, we're now recognizing veterans who fought in World War II. My yeah, father, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're giving them, mm. trying yes, to get a gold right. medal for mm. them. And you know what I'm told by a lot of my friends who are not, they said, we didn't know that there were any Asians serving they in World War II. They did not know that part at all. We don't even believe that Asians serve in the military now. I mean, our, ne our nephew died mm -hmm. in the Middle East. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah They're yeah, shocked. Yeah. They said, mm -hmm. we only think that certain people, but never they, you Asians are so rich, you, you don't serve was, in the military. And he was bullied. Yes, he was bullied and, and, was and bullied. committed suicide. So mm -hmm. therefore, we have to education, education, education. Someone once said, education, you can rob me, you can burn my house down, but you can't take my education. That's why I founded this thing called the Day of Inclusion, to include the contributions of immigrants. The objective for education is to have to convince there is a discrimination, strong discrimination goes that goes hand in hand with the anti-immigration absolutely con concept, call it that way. So let's come back at a certain point to what we can do. Yep. The action item. If you'd like mm. to start now or do you want to take a break? Uh, we can take a break, but... Uh, okay. We are, yeah, so yeah. What, mm -hmm. given the fact that there is definitely no immigration reform, mm -hmm. we're going backward. What can we do? Let me offer three things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Number one, education. There's a bill in California to start ethnic studies as a required course for our students. Now that may be very controversial, what All you right. put in there. It looks like we want to stretch it into all the three, right? So we let's, need take a, let's take a break right now. That's right. We come back with all the three. Thank you so much. I can't hurry on that. <laughs> I can't afford to hurry on that. All right, my dear friend, my lovely audience, I love you so much. And that's why the more I love you, the more I feel it is my burden on my shoulder upon me to, to, to bring you the fact the fact is we have the obstacles, we have the going back and forth, back and forth on immigration. However, if you look beyond that obstacle, you will find there is a force, there is a good reason there. I found, what I found was discrimination in the biggest sense. It's never gone. It's still there, stronger, only stronger. Stay with us. We'll be right back, please. Everything is to work on now. Uh, uh, my name is Paul James. I'm uh, 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 
Hello friends, my loved audience, welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it is time for our own defense. It is time to fight a war against the old word discrimination, which for a while we thought was gone. However, it never been. What are we gonna do? And we have solutions, thanks to people like my friend, the Honorable Mike Kim. We were talking about three resolutions, right? Yes. So we have to, like I said, I really have to let you the opportunity to stretch the whole thing out, to talk about one by one, so it gets rooted in everybody, so that we want to go ahead. Yes, thank you so much. Sure, please. Very good question. What thank can you. we do about it? Mm -hmm. Discrimination is always combated by education education at every level. We have one opportunity to educate our students about the contributions of Chinese Americans mm. and what they suffered during World War I, World War II, and even today. And that needs to go into the history books. A lot of people don't know this, but there's a very famous university named Stanford University. And if you Google the name Stanford and Chinese, you will find there were a lot of negative attitudes about the Chinese that were carried by certain people in the Stanford family. Stanford, of course, started Stanford University. There was a Stanford who was the governor of California. We must educate people about the contributions, of, especially of Chinese Americans and all immigrants. Many people don't know. Many people don't know that my father came over and fought, my, my grandfather came over to work on the roads, but he became a cook. And my father served in World War II. And if you look at the pictures of any World War II p movie, World War II picture, you will never see any Asians in there. But if you go on the website for the Chinese Historical mm -hmm. Society, you will see hundreds and hundreds of Chinese Americans in uniform, as my father was. Number one, education. Number two, we must educate ourselves also about legislation. First, the good legislation. Or let me start with the bad legislation. There's a bill called the RAISE Act, R-A-I-S-E, that seeks to eliminate immigration as we know it. And it was sponsored by two uh, United States uh, elected officials, Cotton and Purdue. And what it would do it is it would basically cut immigration as we know it completely in half and maybe to even less. The first thing it will do, it will virtually eliminate most family immigration. Most people that I know came here because their spouse or their parents or their children or mm. their aunt or the uncle sponsored them for a mm -hmm. green card. That would be cut from say 500,000 to maybe 20 or 30,000. A quota? Yes. Mm -hmm. Number two, many people come here because of a job offer. Mm -hmm. But that also would be replaced by a point system. And mm. the point system would basically discriminate against anyone coming other than the European countries. Mm. So that is education about legislation negatively. The third thing is education about legislation positively. And there are very many good legislative proposals out there mm. that will make our immigration more fair we have 11 to 12 million undocumented in the yes, United States. Yes, of course. You're I was exactly gonna, you're not going to talk to, about them. You're not going to get rid of them mm -hmm. uh, anytime soon unless you want to have mm -hmm. a massive uh, in, uh, humanitarian problem. Of course. Which we're already starting at the border. Hitler has killed a, Adolf Hitler. Hitler that was the killed final, only six million. The, 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 the solution um, must be to allow those that are in here I'll give you an example. We have a great problem of people who don't pay their taxes. Mm -hmm. We have a great problem of people who don't pay for child support. We have a problem with people who speed, drunk driving. To address the problem, we don't put all of these people in jail for life sentences. We give them an opportunity to work their way back into society. Mm -hmm. And so I would propose 
-hmm. that we need to have a path toward legalization. That's number one. There are other um, proposals that will make it possible to speed up. People have been waiting for years, decades. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're a U.S. citizen and you sponsored your brother or sister, it may be 20 years before they ever get here. Yeah, you're right. And so before we have new immigration laws, let's worry about the people that have already applied many, many years ago in which many of the petitioners are almost mm. getting ready to unfortunately pass away. All right. So we must solve. So those are just three basic things we can do now. Mm. And I have other ideas later, but maybe when we come back. Yeah, good. That's good. And at, at least one thing we are clear of that we have to be sober minded of that if we ourselves as immigrants do not work towards the right that we deserve by constitution, there is nobody will stand on our behalf. Yes. Am I right? That's so correct. So making a good point. That's point number one. Point number two, to do so the best way to educate people. Yes. To educate our kids. So history will not be repeated. And whatever is being repeated at this moment though, I believe the age of educated people will correct it. All right? And number two, to make sure we are open-eyed to legislature. I give you a good example. Do not just take it for granted, legislature, all the legislators are good people. No, they are liars. There are many of them. I'll give you an example. Last year of a proposition number six, remember? Yes. That was the, uh, the increase, the, I mean, the gasoline tax, remember? Yes. Uh -huh. It was the stop. The, the bill, uh, the bill from uh, the, I mean, motion of the bill is to stop the tax, the gasoline tax. So at the time when voting, what you see on the explanation of the bill says, your yes would mean to stop the funds of your infrastructure. So they lied. As a result, many who goes support the bill goes against it, voted against it, because of they lie. So they do lie to you because there is a group interest to protect. So let me summarize. Yeah, go ahead. And, and build on what you've said in a very articulate way. Have you mm -hmm. been? So number one, discrimination must be countered with education. Discrimination must be countered with legislation. And the final one is discrimination can be countered by political activation, meaning that mm. we have an election coming up that I think will be the most important election in my lifetime in 2020, just a few months from now. There Legis has to be the voices. That's correct, for the president and everyone else. Mm. I think that will determine the direction of our country for the rest of our lives. So politically activation, get involved in the political process, register people to vote, work for a candidate that you believe in, make sure that people go out to vote. Unfortunately, in the Asian American community, we have one of the lowest voter registration rates. In other words, we have people that work hard to get a green card, then they work hard to become a US citizen, mm. but they don't take the next step to register to vote. Mm. So again, discrimination countered by voter registration. And it is also understood and of course, the understanding has to be made by education. Without ed education, that other understanding is not possible. Why they are not interested in voting? Because they came from a country mostly, or countries, there was no word of a voting about. Yes. There is no vote to talk about. They never know what a vote, what a, what, what a vote, vote would mean, would a look, what, what whatsoever. So, Conceptually, there is no such element of voting in the mind. So we have to educate them. You have the right to do so. You have your one vote, which is given by God, which is protected by Constitution, to go ahead and vote, to speak out. Do you think that's the right approach? Yes, and what we have to do is, um, that's true, that if you come from another country, I think particularly the older people, they don't mm -hmm. trust government, yeah. they fill out papers and then bad things happen. But there's no excuse for the new generation. 
So I would say, Jack, what we have to do is, anybody who's in high school right now, plan for the day that you're going to register to vote. You've had the benefit of education. You probably speak English fairly well, probably better than me. And you have the opportunity to register to vote. You can start looking for the process when you're 17. And get your club, whether it's the Key Club, the Honor Club, uh, all of these clubs, get mm. them to do a project yeah, yeah, to yeah. register themselves to vote. That is probably the most important thing we can do. You know why? Because we have thousands and thousands of our young people are in school right now. The best education they can get is about voter education because that will lead to their future success in their community. Mm. So I challenge every buddy who's in high school right now or college, register to vote before you see the next program with the amazing Jack In other words, do not blame anybody else but yourself. You have to, to, to vote. You, you can register to, to vote online. You, you have to be party in. Right? Yes. Register online, you be, be party in, so that you are considered as one of the Americans. So, so that you vote, right? Okay, my dear friends, uh, let's take a very short moment now. Uh, coming back, we will have to put some losing end together to still get to the point, all right? To find a, the bottom line solution, why we're not seeing things happen, why we see other things happen on the contrary. Stay with us, please. Hello, my dear friends, my lovely audiences. Uh, welcome back to the show. It is a great moment that uh, uh, I have this opportunity, this privilege to have my friend, the friend for the whole California, Honorable Mike Yin, to come here, share his point of views on the issue of immigration, number one, as a politician, number two, as a lawyer, as a profession, right? Now, back to all these, because we have laid down all the cards. Now, it looks to me, we have some little confusion to deal with, right? When people are talking, to give you an example, when people are talking about gun right, or I mean gun control, they, the, uh, the opposite side, comes out and say, hey, the gun right is God-given, is constitutionally uh, blessed, right? So they are, Raise it to a raising it to a level that anybody who talks about gun control must go against the gun right. As a matter of fact, between gun control and gun right, there is something in between. To put some regulations on gun handlings, called gun control, still having this gun right. Immigration, the same thing. When you talk about a border control, right? The other body says, you want an open border, right? Go ahead, let's open up the border. Border control does not mean to open the border or something. So the, it looks that there is lived, the, this kind of confusion is a dedicatedly, I mean dedicatedly man-made. So do you agree with me? If not, why? Yes, I think that right now we're talking away from each other. And um, I, I really feel that three things have to happen. I think number one is that we need to find a way to talk to each other in a respectful manner, uh, just the way that you do. Sometimes when the disrespect is there, education cannot exist when there's disrespect. The teacher and the student or us as equals. I think number two, what we need to do is to, uh, again, through education, young people 
are better at this because they will read the information and then put it in some kind of a debate form and then we can pick and choose. I think young people need to get involved in the debate because they're very good at reading things and then presenting it in a debate. Every high school student I know is either on the debate team or yeah, wants of course, to be on the debate team. As once the second president of LACCD though, you are considered as educator yourself. Yes, right? and I, so I, yes. The, the, the educated young people is really, really a key issue. It's really the key because older people already form their opinion is very hard to change. Mm -hmm. You ask an older person, what's your favorite food? Plus, plus they will logically, insist on it. Plus, logically, when time goes by, it is the young replacing the old. And the young will yeah. suffer the consequences yeah, 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 of yeah, the yeah, current yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Right. And the young are more able to change their, their ideas. And so that's why I think I face, place a lot of faith and effort must go to our high school and college students now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. They are the future. Now I see the logic. Now I see the logic. If I go back 10 years, my little son was a small boy like this. Daddy, may I have a dollar? Like that kind of thing. Yes. Now my son said, Daddy, how are you doing? Here's a check of 2000 Something like that, right? Now, that's only a difference in 10 years. In, two year, in 10 years. Yes. Right? Now, uh, if we... If we do not put our efforts in the 10 years to educate this bunch of young people, though, in 10 years, you're still talking about the same group of young guys. That's right. That's right. So if we start now and we really educate the young people, then we will have the solution in five to 10 you're years. Right, you're they right. They are the hope. You're right, you're right. The housing problem, they're the mm -hmm. ones that have no homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're and begging. The older ones, older ones even, do, even will grow out. Well, the older folks have more financial ability. Mm. They own the homes. The young people are, will face the worst type of society if we get rid of immigrants. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. If we get rid of immigrants, it'll be the young people who suffer. Mm -hmm. They will find out. At least uh, we're missing one arm on Mars. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> at least. They'll wake up one morning and they'll find out they fell in love with an immigrant but the immigration law does not allow them to get the green card for that person mm -hmm. or that child, and they'll have to go to another country. And yeah. then they're going to say, Mommy, Daddy, why didn't you tell me that the laws were changing yeah, 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 to yeah. discriminate against me? Mm -hmm. And they will say, well, we went to Jack Zhao's program on EDI Media. That was the one that warned we, you. We did fight. Yes, <laughs> did we did fight. fight. And we call, we call upon education. And we have to fight more. Mm. And we have to go into every school, every classroom, and make sure that the mm. young people know that they've been warned all right, all right. about this horrible thing that's coming. If you knew that an earthquake is coming, you would prepare. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's another earthquake coming, mm. and that's mm. the political earthquake mm. of not dealing with immigration reform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Speaking of the incoming earthquake, the quote-unquote earthquake, the uh, immigration earthquake, how... Do you think the uh, 2020 election, presidential election, uh, the earthquake will be a quick? Well, I think that the outcome uh, of the election is very concerning. And I do think that my personal feeling is that if the status quo doesn't change, then uh, it will be a tremendous, uh, the earthquake is already starting. The bad behavior, the bad laws, the rupture of our international relationships is headed for disaster. Mm -hmm. These are our friends. Many of them have countries where their young men and women died for our cause oh, yeah, of in course, other countries. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, so sure. that mm -hmm. relationship is starting to rupture already. I keep saying that I enjoy the freedom lots of people die for. Yes. So I have really to do something to come up to with the freedom that lots of people die for. Uh, people from other countries. Yeah. That our president is disrespecting. Yeah. By being disrespectful to them. And I think yeah. that we need to ask ourselves. And the lots of people do not even do not even realize that the freedom we have, how valuable. Re remember the joke? Uh, one, uh, uh, I mean, President, uh, President, uh, President uh, Reagan and the uh, Russian leader and the one from uh, Poland or Poland. Poland talking about uh -huh. 
So uh, the 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 the, the Polish president says, in our country, if the dog barks, we give them a beef, give them beef, right? And uh, the Russian says, oh, that's good, you have beef, right? And then they ask Reagan, what do you have? What do you have? And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 well, so, oh, anyway, well, uh, until the very end, the Russian leader says, in our country, our dog doesn't know how to bark. Oh, yes. Doesn't know how to bark, mm -hmm. right? So the doesn't know how to bark thing really says, our freedom. Yes, it's a very basic fundamental. The very basic fundamental. It, it, it's not here, but it's way back there. Way back there, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right, and your television programs are, in my opinion, the best, um, the best way to combat uh, any ignorance or any confusion. Uh, so thank you, and I commend sure, you for sure, doing sure. this. Thank you very much for, 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 for getting this kind of like, uh, play the damn card with me, right? Okay, now. Suppose with the incoming presidential election, though, we had hopes between Trump's revision for himself, let him get re-elected, re he will revise himself, or say Joe Biden has a better chance, because Joe Biden supports immigration. Where do you think we shall, our, our, our regular people, every Joe and Sue's will stand? Well, I think the average person, and uh, certainly I'm an average person too, even though I may have my preferences, I think they really need to look at the debates. There's a debate coming up, and they really need to decide who they support. In fact, for the first time, we have an Asian American who's going to be in the top 10 in the next yeah, once debate. Once again, we're the country yes. that everybody can bark. And so, as you know, there's a Chinese American candidate. And so there should be more interest in the political process. There's no excuse. People in the past can say, well, there's nobody running that, I, that I'm interested in. But one of our, from our own community is running for president. And he's in the top 10. He'll be in the debate in a few weeks. So I think that no matter who the candidate is, we need to take a position. We need to be interested. We need to ask the kind of questions of our friends and neighbors. Who do you stand for? Oh, you're not going to vote? Oh, that's horrible. Let me tell you why you should vote. We need to have that conversation. If you knew that an earthquake yeah, was coming you're right, you're right, you're right. and you were putting water in and you were putting food in in your, in your garage and your neighbor is not doing anything, wouldn't you go over to the neighbor and say, neighbor, let them do the same well, thing. Why don't, if you don't protect yourself, then I have to protect you. Hmm. Then you're putting a burden on me. So that's what a democracy is. If we don't ask our neighbors and our friends and our relatives to get the education possible, mm. then we will all suffer together. And that's really called responsibility. Mm. Freedom is not free. Yes, of course. And many yeah. have paid the ultimate okay. price right. by being injured or murdered, or, I mean, or killed. Our price of freedom is very cheap. It's called education. Mm. Education. Yeah. Uh, my dear friends, oh, probably I have to ask you, if I may borrow your quote uh, to uh, end up this show, that when freedom is not free, imm your immigra immigration right, your immigrant right is never free either, right? So today, my dear friends, uh, we're, we had a very thorough talk on the immigration issue. We believe that uh, with the immigration uh, concept, uh, we believe there is a uh, discrimination evolved, a strong discrimination trend evolved. And for that to get to, to, to get it done, to get the job done, we can do three things. Education, education, and education, right? So uh, my appreciation goes to my dear friend, friend from the, for the whole community, for whole California, Honorable Mike Yen, Thank you for sharing your time and views. My great honor. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you, sir.